and I'm a fan of uh, electric vehicles and um, I never actually bought a car in my life. And <laughs> as I was good. following the whole situation with um, Tesla and all the electric vehicles emerging, I kind of thought to myself, and I think I'm pretty um, resolute on that decision, that I'm never going to buy a combustion car and that my first car ever that I buy is going to be a fully electric car to, you know, kind of make a statement out of it. Sure. And uh, I'm willing to wait for a year or two or more uh, until I, uh, you know, get more financially stable. And when the price um, goes down, as, as it yeah. always does with um, basically every product out there at the start, it's super expensive. And then after a few years, the price kind of just dwindles down a little bit. So I'm, I'm kind of waiting to catch it there. I'd and say the mobile phone analogy is a good one. That like, it is, yeah. That, the that's last ten what years, I was we were maybe in the early nineties, and uh, as far as mobile phones are concerned, and now we're hitting that that nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety eight tipping point where like your mom suddenly has a mobile phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your grandma also has a phone. You know, like yeah. you know, everybody has a phone. Uh, that's true, and I think that's also what's happening to cars. It just goes a lot slower because they're harder to manufacture, more parts, um, more things depend on them. But uh, what we see from the industry leader Tesla is that he started with the most expensive version, a sports car. Then he made um, the Model S. And then now as more time goes on, he's trying to reach a uh, larger um, consumer base. And, and I, know, of course, I, I know we said we weren't going to talk about Tesla, but just last night as we're recording this, they unveiled the newest version of the Model S. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's nicely, it's a subtle update on the exterior anyway, but the interior has been completely redesigned and the technology is, is just crazy. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour in under two seconds in nice. a family car. It's nice. that's nuts that's amazing that that's yeah. amazing um we're, we're definitely going to touch on that because uh the the next topic that we're going to go into is actually those high performance uh cars and um me and brendan were kind of talking about what we're going to cover in this um episode and uh, we decided to go for uh the chinese market and also this european market here um i'm going to start off by covering a small company that's kind of being very competitive right now and they're doing some strong heaps forward um makes me super proud uh, you know like um croatia is a really small country the economy is bad like the only uh, part of the economy is tourism that's like really booming because you have a great coast and the tourism is actually working every year really really good in our favor but if you look at the industry it's pretty bad and Croatia never officially had a car company. There was one car company made in uh, Yugoslavia, which is the former country which comprised of Serbia, Bosnia, and um, it was actually based in Serbia. So even if you divided that country, it still wasn't in, in Croatia. Um, but there was a few other projects that kind of started from Croatia as well. One of them was docking, but it never got the funding. Uh, they wanted to be kind of like the city electric car and they were kind of trying to be like a smart car. I don't know if you... How do you spell heard. that? Um, D-O-K-I-N-G, docking. Uh -huh. I think okay. that's that's the proper spelling. Uh, mm -hmm. But they never took off ground. Um, and when, was, when was this? Um, it's, it's a few years back now. Um, okay. I would dare to say 10, but I didn't look into the numbers. Um, I remember Mate talked about them and they were also a good project. But um, one of the major problems in Croatia is that the economy is so small, we don't have venture capitalism or venture mm -hmm. VC firms that can invest huge monies from large investors. So it's hard to get funding. So each time you have to go somewhere international to secure um money from another country right or a big private investor or something like that hey thanks for watching this video if you want to see the full version go to the uncle gold podcast youtube channel or watch the next clip 